This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to start talking about some power editing techniques for Avid Media Composer and I want to start out by talking about some power editing techniques when working with transitions because I find a lot of editors get bogged down when doing transitions even the most basic of dissolves because they go through the whole process of using the quick transition command and to be honest that's a very long way of doing things and in this lesson I want to show you some great tips that you can use to speed up your overall transition workflow to save time for the more important tasks that you have to do during your edits. Now before we go on I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer but sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's Command or Alt and tab into Avid Media Composer. And I have a basic timeline here just with a few edits in it. And let's just talk about obviously the most common way of doing transitions. And we're just going to start out by talking about the centered on cut transition. Okay, now to be honest, most editors that I see editing don't really use this very often, but you know, obviously it's one of them, so I want to talk about it. The shortcut obviously backslash on the keyboard brings us to the quick transition window where we can take the dissolve and we can add it into our timeline. Now, of course, if we have an in, in and out point edited or inserted over multiple shots, what we can do is with those in and out points, we can use that to apply transitions to the duration of that in to out point. Okay, now I'm not going to do that here. I am simply going to say add and I'm going to add that transition to my timeline. Now, again, the most common way to add that type of transition, but what if there's a situation where you're editing and you've decided, you know what, I'd like to add a transition in that's going to end when this shadow disappears from the screen. So this is how I see a lot of editors tackle that. They come down to the point where that shadow leaves the screen right there. They mark that as an out point. They come back to that in frame. They mark that as an in point. They say that's one second and 14 frames. They come into the quick transition window, enter the information. They say we want that to be started. You can see that this is already taking a long time. It takes a long time for me to explain it. So you can imagine how long it actually is going to take to actually do it. So there's got to be an easier way to do it. Well, there actually is. And there's two great commands that I use all the time. I have them mapped to my keyboard. And they're actually located right up here at the top of the timeline. And they're called the head fade and tail fade commands. Okay, now I'm just going to remove the in and out points from my footage here. Now, what's important to remember when you're talking about these two effects here, these two commands, is that they're referring to a single shot. They're referring to, if I happen to be parked on this shot right here, they're referring to the head frame and the tail frame. So, for example, if I wanted this transition to end right here and I just want it to fade from this shot into this shot starting at the transition instead of going through that whole process I just went through all I need to do is to come in and fade the head of this shot down to this point right here boom done how simple was that very simple didn't have to go through that whole rigmarole of going into the quick transition window now again you might be thinking well Kev how much time did that save you a minute well think of it this way if you do that command you know a hundred times a day there's a hundred minutes you've just saved that's basically an hour and you know 40 minutes of your day that you've just got back to do more important tasks okay now before we go on I do want to give a quick shout out to Artbeats who provided me with the footage for this tutorial as always fantastic looking footage you can check them out and all of these clips from as you know for that fact at artbeats.com Okay, now the tail fade works essentially exactly the same. If I would like to have a dissolve ending at the transition, but I'd like it to start, let's just say I want it to start when the mountain clears the frame right there. Again, without having to go through that whole process, I'm just going to come up and I'm going to fade the tail out. So basically, we've just done that command right there. Very quick, very simple, and again, big time saver. 
okay? So let's move on now. And what I'd like to talk about now is I'd like to come over here and I'd like to talk about the smart tools. Okay, smart tools are something that kind of scares editors. Editors don't really like them too much. I sort of am always using the overwrite and the um, the insert segment tools. To be honest, I don't really use the trim ones uh, all that much. But one thing that I do use all the time is the transition manipulation command. So what exactly does that mean and how exactly does that work? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove these effects. I'm going to put a transition back in here. Yes, I know I went to the quick transition window, but I'm just going to be adding a basic dissolve right in the middle, just like such. Okay. Now, how many times have you said to yourself, you know what, I'd really like to get in and adjust this transition. I'd like to move it around in my timeline, okay, to sort of get a, a better idea of how this transition could look. And you find yourself constantly removing an effect, adding the transition back in, slightly different, removing it and back and forth. Well, you don't actually need to do any of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over here to the Smart Tools. I'm going to turn on the Transition Manipulation Command. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to notice that the vertex at the start of the transition, the vertex at the end of the transition suddenly appear. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to head right over the center of the dissolve and you'll notice and what I should have actually done here. I'm just going to turn off the transition manipulation tool. I should make this a little bit longer here just to make my life a bit easier. Okay. That's a bit better. Okay. And what I'm going to do is head back to transition manipulation and I'm going to bring the selection, the arrow tool or the selection tool over top of that transition. And you'll notice that I get the hand tool. Hand tool meaning that I can actually move this transition around just like this. Now, as soon as I grab that transition and I start moving it, you're going to notice that the transition manipulation window appears at the top where the composer or the preview and the uh, program window were. Okay, And I can now drag this around. Now, what does this represent? What this represents is, if I let go for a second, this is the first frame, middle frame, and end frame of the outgoing shot in relation to the transition. This is the first frame, the middle frame, and the last frame of the shot, the next shot coming up represented within the transition. Okay. Now I kind of stole my own thunder just a little bit here. Okay. Because I did get in and adjust the timing of this effect and how I did it was I stepped out of the transition manipulation tool I stepped into effects mode you don't actually even need to do that if I turn transition manipulation on and I grab this shot again I can actually adjust it from right here I can just punch in three seconds and there's a three second transition okay but now what about a situation where I might want to adjust the incoming frame or the incoming start of the transition or the outgoing end frame of the transition what I can do again, much like I had done before, is I'm just going to make sure that I'm actually using the transition manipulation tool here. There we go. Is I can grab either of these two vertexes, or I believe it would be vertices, and I can grab them and just drag them to adjust this shot. Now, the great part about this is, is that because I'm worrying about the incoming shot, it's only going to show me the transition in, re in relation to the incoming shot when I get in and I start dragging this transition. And on the flip side, if I come down to the first vertex and I start dragging that, which is going to be the outgoing shot, which is the one that we're over top of right now, you'll see that I only get a visual representation of what the first frame, the one that I'm grabbing now, the middle frame, which is basically right about the edit where I'm parked now, and the end frame, which is right down here at the end. Okay. Now, again, if I remove this effect and I come down here and I just come back up here and I add the head fade just like such. You'll notice that with the transition manipulation tool, that's still turned on. I could just grab this now and be very precise as to exactly where I want this transition to go. So for example, if I only wanted to go to where that shadow disappears from the screen, boom, there it is, let go, turn transition manipulation off, and we're all set to go. Okay. Transition manipulation tool, fantastic tool that, to be honest, is very, very underutilized. Much like the head and tail fade, those are also commands that are highly underutilized. And I see editors going through the long process to do everything when they don't necessarily need to do that. Okay, so one last thing that I do want to mention as well, and what I'm going to do is just remove that effect. And I'm going to add in a flash to white here, one that I use all the time. We'll use it as a dip to color. We'll make it five frames. And of course, we'll step into effects mode because there's no way to get in and set the color inside of the quick dissolve window, which to be honest, we really should be able to do that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is switch the background color by double clicking on it quickly, switching it to white. There we go. Okay. 
And there is our dip to white. Boom. Okay. Now what I'd like to do with this effect is I'd like to save it as a favorite. So what I'm going to do is inside of the master effects, you'll see that I actually already have one in there. I'll just remove it. And I'm going to grab this dip to color and drag it into my master effects bin. Okay. Now what I have the ability to do is I'm going to step into effects mode here. Okay. And I'm going to select that transition. Let me just move the effects editor out of the way here. And what I can now do is I can come in and I can select, and I should have selected the other one as well. I can select whichever shots I'd like to have a transition added to. And with them selected, I can now simply double click on that transition. And now I have a dip to white in between each one of those effects or clips. Okay. And what I also have the ability to do at any time, of course, as well, is I can just, you know, if I don't want that one, I can just select whichever edits I want and just double click to get in and be very specific about the shots that I want to have the dip to white added to. Okay. Now that does beg the question, if you're working on a bigger show, let's just say you're working on a network show and you're working with other editors and you guys are constantly making, I say you guys, you guys and, you know, men and women out there, I say guys referring to both men and women. Okay. And you guys out there are coming in, you're creating new transition or new effects all the time. Okay. And you want to be sharing these with the other editors that you're working with. Now, this is where I like to get in to create a master effects bin. You could be adding, you know, great BCC or Sapphire transitions in here. You could be adding BCC color grades or Sapphire glows, one of my favorite glows out there, okay, into these bins so that other editors can use them so all your looks stay the same. Now, how we used to do this is one editor would get in, they would, you know, add stuff to the bin, you close it, you open the bin in another project. You don't have to actually do any of that, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the master effects bin. And with the bin selected, I'm going to navigate up to the bin dropdown and I'm going to add this bin to my favorite bins. Okay. Now you'll notice that the favorite bins folder has appeared at the bottom of the project. There is my master effects bin. Now what's important to keep in mind is that this is a mirror essentially of this bin. Okay. It's not the same bin. If I delete it from the master or from the favorites bin, it doesn't delete it from my project. Okay. So keep that in mind. So with that in there, what I now have the ability to do is to, in any other project, this favorites bin will appear. Now for me, I don't necessarily like it at the bottom. What I'm going to do is come to my settings, come to bin settings. Let's show this at the top of the project window. Okay, I'm going to come down. I'm going to say, okay. And let me now just switch over to a different project to show you what's going on over there. All right, I've switched projects. And if you take a look over here at the top of this project, there is my favorite bins folder that I can twirl down. I can come to those master effects. You'll see there is that dip to color that I can now take and add to any timeline that I'm working on. Now, this again is another great time saver to stop you from having to constantly open bins. Which one is that bin in? Blah, blah, blah. Nope. It's always going to appear at the top of your project unless you go into those settings and change them. And this is another great workflow enhancement to help save you time and focus on the things that are most important in your edits. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris Effects is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.